This is just a quick video on Thevenin and equivalent circuits because I um, had a meeting I could not postpone and so we missed class. But the big idea of Thevenin and Norton's is that we take you know voltage sources and current sources and a network of resistors, capacitors, and inductors and we can turn that into one voltage source in a series with a series resistance in the case of a Thevenin or one current source in parallel with a resistance or impedance in the case of the Norton equivalent circuit. Now um, this is like superposition right because we modify the circuit to find uh, various things that we need to find right um, also this is for you know linear circuit elements so the things that you need to to understand right to be able to do this is what is an ideal voltage and current source and how to set them to zero now we covered that last class right but again because we're going to be shorting and opening things we have to be able to recognize after one of these circuit transformations are things in series or are they in parallel right and you have to be able to calculate elements in series and elements in parallel right um, and of course as I'm doing this video and this is not really ready for prime time right calculate the impedance of these elements calculate equivalent networks of impedance and how to pretend to be an ohmmeter all right now really when I have to remember or look up what Thevenin is I go right to Wikipedia and here's the procedure right which um, it's accurate but it's probably best learned by doing a few examples and what I'm going to do is just go over a few things rather quickly so that it can help you get started on the homework in case um, you wanted to work this weekend all right so this is kind of blazingly fast because I've already drawn it right so um, feel free to slow down the video in YouTube and feel free to speed it up so let's just say we have an example circuit here okay we have a uh, one input and we have R1, R2, R3, and it's connected uh, to a load, RL. And we're just going to label these points A and B. All right. Now, yeah, you always have to put a ground in there somewhere. And so if I were actually to draw this in LT spice, this node name B would disappear. It would be trumped by uh, the ground symbol. So the way we find, right, convert this, right, we're going to convert it to this, okay? We're going to have a V Thevenin and an R Thevenin, right? So the way we're going to do that, right, or I'll just leave it right there. Eventually, you'll need a ground, right? is if it's connected to a load and in this case it is it's called rl i just get rid of it you get you do this without the load so i want to find what is vab when there's no resistor there so i redraw the circuit see the rl is gone and then i have to notice that without any rl it's an open circuit right so if it's an open circuit, the current through this is zero. Well, if the current through this is zero, there's no voltage drop between node 2 and node B. All right? That means they're equal. So then, really, all we have to do is find the voltage division between these two resistors. And so V2 equals the voltage division of R2 and, uh, divided by the sum of the resistances. Okay? And the example I like to talk about with voltage division it's just something we use all the time without thinking and um, if you remember uh, Karate Kid 1 
where you're doing wax on and wax off and the student is doing a whole lot of chores and really wonders why right and he, th he thinks it's a waste of time until the instructor starts throwing some punches and says wax on wax off right and so I'm just saying voltage division impedance in series impedance in parallel right things like that now please don't consider it when I I'm attacking you but um, these are tools right to excel and voltage division is just really common one all right um, if you haven't seen the movie find some spare time and watch it so so now we found what V Thevenin is right and it's just VN scaled by that voltage division now we need to find R Thevenin so we set all the independent sources to zero. Well, that means we short voltage sources and open current sources. So this was a voltage source, right, because we had plus and minus. And I just draw a line through it, right? So that's kind of a symbolic way of setting it to zero. But then it's better to redraw it, right? So now that this node voltage is the same as this voltage, right, well then, you know, all of this is at the same potential. Excuse me. So, you know, here, everywhere, mathematically, is considered the same point. All right. So, So there's R3, there's R1, and there's R2. Now, pretend to be an ohmmeter. So I've connected an ohmmeter here, and an ohmmeter sends in a test current. That test current, all of that test current goes through R3. Okay? So that means R3 is in series. Then that test current gets split into IR1 and IR2, and then it recombines here to come back out. That means R1 and R2 are in parallel. So right here, R3 is in series, again, with the series combination of R1 in parallel with R2, right? And see how maybe these didn't look in parallel, right, when we drew the circuit originally, but when we short it, R1 and R2 are in parallel. So now we just have to draw the circuit. We have our V Thevenin, which happened to be the voltage division of Vn, and then our R Thevenin, which is uh, R3 in series with the parallel combination of one resistors 1 and 2. Now, once we know that, I can find an RL that gives me maximum power, and that's just equal to R Thevenin. So if this value was 50 ohms and I wanted to transfer maximum power to RL, it'd be 50 ohms. Now, what if this, in that previous example, right, I'll just rapidly draw it. I had a resistor and a capacitor and an inductor. It's the same problem, actually, right? But now instead of R1, it's ZR. Instead of R2, it's ZC. Instead of R3, it's ZL. But it's the same function mathematically, except, oh, that should be, no, this is wrong. ZL in series with uh, the parallel combination of the resistor and the capacitance is impedance. Now, sure, you have to do a lot of complex math to get the right answer, but um, that's really it. V Thevenin is the same thing. It's just the voltage division between the capacitor uh, and the resistor. Now, the maximum power, instead of just equaling Z Thevenin, it's the complex conjugate of V Thevenin. All right. Now, in order for this to work, Vn must be a phasor, meaning it's got to be a sine wave, it's got to have an amplitude, and it's got to have a frequency. All right. In 
just to clear, you know, that's A and that's B. So really, you break this problem up into two parts is, you know, you do the Thevenin and the and uh, voltage source and the equivalent Thevenin resistance, right, and come up with some equation. And then you use the complex uh, algebra to calculate an answer. All right. In the homework, there's actually reviews on going from uh, polar to Cartesian coordinates and things like that. All right. Now, this is one of the more complicated examples from the homework, and I'm just going to give you an overview of how to do it. Is that so now, yeah, I want to find R thevenin and V thevenin if this is point if this is point A and point B. Now we have more than one source. That's okay. We're going to convert that into one voltage source. But this is exactly the superposition problem we worked on last time, right? So if I set V1, if I set V2 equal to zero, right, I'm going to get a voltage division here of R2 in parallel with R3, voltage dividing with R1. And so really, to simplify it, I have V1 times some scale factor plus V2 times some scale factor, right? And these are the scale factors here, right? I'm not going to redo that part because... Um, I'm not going to redo that part. However, this isn't the complete story, right? Because that's just VG, right? Due to both parts. I have to, and I'm just multiply both of these times GM, which then turns, which is GM VG. So here's VG due to 1, V for 2 VG due to 1. So I multiply that times GM, and then to convert it into a voltage, I have to multiply it by RD. But remembering the current direction is flowing that way, which the voltage drop across RD is positive to negative, but V out is measured backwards to that. And so it's minus. Again, this problem, we found what V out was. So in this case, V out and V thevenin are the same. Okay? So now we have to find R thevenin. All right. So here's, a, you know, I've redrawn the problem, right? And remember, whenever I write one of these ground symbols, it's as if I'm drawing a, a wire between them all. All right. So now, in order to find R thevenin, I set every independent voltage source to zero and current source to zero. So how do I do that? Draw a line through it, mathematically. Well, now when I redraw it, you can see that end is at ground, that end is at ground. There's no potential difference, no current can flow. Vg equals zero. So if Vg equals zero, that current equals zero. How do I get rid... Now this is a behavioral or dependent current source, meaning it depends on Vg, right? But I've shorted these. In order to set this equal to zero, I have to take it out, which I believe I do in the next page. Yeah. So... This current source, you just pull it out to set it to zero. Just like when I said in superposition, you remove current sources to set them to zero, short voltage sources to set them to zero. Well, now, pretend to be an ohmmeter. You send in a test current. It can't. None of the current can be split here because that's an infinite resistance, so it all has to go through here. So, in fact, R thevenin equals Rd. All right? So now we have um, a different example. I have a current source. It's independent. 
it goes into a parallel combination of R1, 2, and 3. Then that current comes back together to go through R4. It continues on through R5 and then back through the current source. So before, B was always at ground. In this case, it's actually not. It's between here and here. Okay, it's across this R4. So what is V-thevenin? It's whatever the voltage is across that resistor. Well, if this is the current, sure, it splits up three ways, but it combines back into the same current, right? Everywhere here, that current is going to be equal. Now, it splits up here, but the sum would be equal to the original current. So what is V across V A B is actually V R4, which is the current of the source times R4. Voila. Now, how do we find R Thevenin? Well, this is the depend uh, the independent current source, and we set it to zero. How do we set it to zero? We get rid of it. Okay. We pretend to be a current meter. I mean an ohm meter. We send in a test current. Okay. Now it has a choice. Do I go this way, this way, this way? But the current on this branch is all equal to zero, right? It's open or infinite resistance, so no current can flow. So whatever current comes out of the ohmmeter goes into R4. Now, does it split? Nope, because no, this is open circuit, so no current's going to flow. So the current entering and leaving is, well, it's always the same, but it only passes through one element, and I believe that element was R4, right? So almost by inspection, R thevenin equals R4. All right. And yeah, I could do another problem and call this A and that B. And I'd have to, you know, go from there. All right. That one would be a little more complicated. And it's true. You can have R, L's, and C's. If you do, you need a frequency you, and you need. Um, it needs to be a sine wave. But that should be enough to kind of get your whistle going, you know, uh, wet your whistle on Thevenin circuits. Um, and then Norton really, oops, Norton just converts this. Once you have this, you convert it to the Norton equivalent. But R Thevenin equals R Norton. And then this is turned into a current by scaling the voltage in the uh, Thevenin value of resistance. So really, it's it might look like two different topics, but it's really the same topic. Um, anyway, I hope that helps out. And uh, that's that.